Hi, I'm Dr. Ramsey Main, and the topic today is kind of short versus long implants, and kind of what's the right size. So I'm starting this video with um, you know nature first. So you know nature designed us to have 32 teeth. Sometimes you can see in this X-ray there's wisdom teeth that come in sideways, and there's not enough room. But nature gives us a lot of roots. If we have we have 14, 16 teeth on the top, if you include our wisdom teeth. And even though you have 16 teeth on each arch, you have way more than 16 roots. So you begin to question, well, if we have, let's say, 40 roots or so in each of our jaw, the upper jaw has more roots than the lower jaw, then how can we replace an entire jaw with just little itty-bitty small implants or not use enough of them? Um, there's a lot of, uh, I call misinformation out there about implant length and size. Bigger is not always better. By, by no means is that the case. Um, but there is, a, there is a normal size for teeth. So if you look at this patient, you can see that you know, the upper molars have you know, multiple roots up in here. Uh, the front teeth have less roots because there's less pressure. But notice that they're all long. But more importantly, if you look at the upper jaw, you know, it looks black. It looks more hollow than the lower jaw, which looks more white and dense on panoramic x-ray. So, you know, bone that is softer needs more support, needs more length, more diameter whenever possible uh, because there's not as much surface area. If, if a natural tooth has three roots or two roots, you just replace it with one small screw. It's, it's different. Uh, this, this holds better than this does. So there's, I'm going to take you through a few different examples so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. But this person has I would classify as long roots. They go down about halfway the length of the whole bottom of the jaw over here. And there's, um, you know, there's a certain alignment of all the roots. We'll go to a different, uh, different case. This is my own x-ray, actually. I have more like kind of medium roots, maybe smaller roots uh, in, in total. But in general, I have the same thing. I have single-rooted front teeth and multi-rooted back teeth because back teeth have more pressure. So hence, we need more implants in the back, more pressure or longer or bigger whenever possible. So take a look at this patient. This patient I treated. This is another redo case that I treated. This patient had implants by another dentist many years ago. No, actually, not that many years ago. I think only three years ago. Upper right implants in this area. They were trying to avoid doing a sinus lift. So they put in these little small implants and they connected them, which is better than leaving them disconnected because remember it's an area of high force in soft bone. It was like building, building a house on sand. So if we want to have long-term stability, you know, these, these should have been longer. The diameter looks good. Uh, these lower implants, I did not do them, but these would be considered like their normal size implants. That's, that's a decent size implant, probably 13 millimeters long, probably four millimeters in diameter. They're connected, not the best bridge. So I ended up, this patient came to me, these implants were loose after three or four years. Not just the crowns, but the whole implants. I had to take them out. And since this was a redo, now I really wanted to make sure she had a lot of support. I did a lateral window sinus graft on her and then gave her you know, three implants that are long. I subsequently restored this with um, a splinted bridge where the teeth are connected. And then you can also see the teeth are really tall from top to bottom. They've got a lot of force. Now she's got some good size implants, and given that this was a redo case, you know, it's far better to have, uh, I don't know, I'd like my house to be built with more support than just enough. Uh, it, it, it concerns me uh, whenever there's just barely enough, because those cases are, are bound to fail over time. And the lower jaw, you can have less implants and shorter implants, but in the upper jaw, typically more is necessary. Here's an, here's an image of an upper jaw that uh, somebody had sent to me. Uh, this patient's being restored for a full upper, let's say, portal porcelain bridge. And on the top jaw, you can see that there's just these little six little implants. Six is a great number for the upper jaw, but they are very small. I showed you that image of nature, and there was a whole lot more roots in here. This is going to go all the way back to the molars, at least to the first molar, not all the way back for all 16 teeth, but it's going to give 12 teeth. But six implants for 12 teeth, and those little guys, that's very soft bone in there. You know, I don't know what this is going to look like in three to five years. Um, there's a pretty good chance that those implants won't be there, and this patient would have spent a lot of time and money and resources 
to have this great result only to see it you know kind of fail in the short term it's really heartbreaking to see this um, in, in more extreme cases um, if you just focus on kind of like the lower jaw here, for this is a patient that I treated. I'm showing you a patient that has, you know, pretty long implants in general. Um, you know, the lower jaw is supported by five implants. The bone is very dense. And, you know, we've got good anchorage. If the patient gets peri-implantitis or bone loss around an implant, the whole bridge isn't going to loosen up. There's still going to be a lot more to go, and we can also rescue those implants, do a bone graft around them if she ever loses some bone they're salvageable. If a small implant, an implant that's only eight millimeters long, loses bone, um, it loses two or three millimeters, it's gone. It has to be replaced. The whole crown needs to be replaced. The bridge needs to be replaced. These are called zygomatic implants. These are extra long dental implants that engage the cheekbone. They're meant for more extreme cases or patients that need teeth immediately on the upper jaw. Uh, but again, I'm showing this more for uh, you know, more so you kind of get an, an idea of what's normal and what's not. These would be considered kind of average length. These are kind of th so these are regular dental implants, which are um, regular length, probably about 13 millimeters. These are longer, about 16 millimeters. So anywhere from about you know 10, 12, and above. If you can't get long implants in or wider implants, then you you put more of them. That gives more support that way. But you know, please be cautious about. You know, implant number, of course, you know, as the patient, this isn't something that you make a decision on. And bigger, again, is not always better, and longer is not always better. That can cause problems, that can cause bone loss. It's a fine balance. And uh, when you work with somebody that's experienced and trained and has uh, clinical judgment and expertise, they can help you, kind of guide you as for as for what's right. But again, nature gave us a lot more, a lot more roots than what we see sometimes out here I say on Facebook and other other platforms but I hope this helps you to understand a little bit about implant length again the upper jaw is soft lower jaw is hard more implants on the upper longer bigger more surface areas needed because the bone is soft on the lower jaw because the bone is denser uh, you can have less implants you can have shorter implants we can have single tooth implants there are um, the, it's called biomechanics, how these things actually work in the mouth over time. So anyway, I hope this helps you. And uh, if there's any questions, uh, please let me know. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Bye.